So, I was contacted on YouTube by a, um, an LED manufacturer, and they wanted to know if I could test uh, one of their products out. So, of course I said yes. So, let's see what's inside. Ooh. This right here is an LED light bar manufactured by Rigid Horse. Uh, they're a um, company based out in China, and they're thinking about uh, opening up a market out in America. So, they wanted to get some people to uh, review their products. And they were nice enough to ask me. How cool is that? This thing's rated at uh, 120 watts. It's uh, 21 and a half inches. So that's um, 40 LEDs, 3 watts a piece. They're uh, Philips brand LEDs. It comes out to about 9,000 max lumens. And a color temperature is 6K. So it's nice and white. And it'll even work off of a 9 volt battery. You notice some of them don't light up, but that's just the battery. If you use the 10 volts that they recommend, all of them light up. But it's kind of cool that you could power this entire thing off of a little tiny battery. I don't think you could do that well with a spotlight. Uh, this is their curved model. And uh, it's got, it's the combo spot flood. So they have the, uh, the spot in the middle and the floods on the end. But, you know, nice simple shipping and whatnot. It, uh, it doesn't come with a harness, so I'm going to show you guys how to uh, make a harness. I have an extra one from another bar I had, but... And it also comes with some brackets, so let's take a look. Okay, so here's the, uh, the funky looking brackets that they give you, and you can mount them, and it allows the uh, light bar to be adjusted um, more securely, because it actually, I think it mounts to two separate locations on the light bar, so that you can mount it, and then this is the pivot angle that you can lock it down so you can get the perfect angle. It's pretty neat. I haven't seen a bracket like that before. And it comes with some hardware. you got long bolts, small bolts, washers, and allen keys to adjust it all. So, here's the beauty right here. Look at that. Looks a lot nicer in person. Mm. Pretty nice looking, pretty big, pretty cool. So it's pretty neat. So, let's go take it outside and take a look at it in the daylight. So here's the beast. If you notice on the top, I already have a, uh, a 51 inch uh, LED light bar by E Your Life. And uh, that one's 250 watts. That has 55 watt uh, Cree LEDs. Um, this one obviously has uh, a few less LEDs and they're also lower wattage so in brightness these aren't going to compare but you'd want to compare this to something of you know the same size but we'll still check out how the um, the curved angles compare to that later when it gets dark out but yeah here it is curved pretty cool you put that on there and it it'll fit a lot better with the body lines and everything so you know if I wanted to mount it up on the bumper I could that'd be kind of neat but this video might take a bit of a turn. Hmm. I was taking a look at it, and the size is kind of perfect. I'm thinking going underneath. There's a lot of space back here. A lot of space. So, my idea is to see if I can mount it back here. And, um,. See if it'll still look good. Hopefully I don't have to like move the license plate up or anything or if it'll show right, but you know, I'll see how it goes. But if everything goes well, I'm gonna put this on the Honda. Yes. It's dark out. Perfect time to test this lab bad boy. So, here's the light bar. And I have it hooked up to um, my little relay setup for now. So, first let's turn on the headlights. Uh, something interesting about LED light bars, uh, no matter what voltage you put into them, uh, as long as what it's rated for, um, it never dims. With uh, standard automotive headlights, the more um, voltage they get, the brighter they are. So, right now, these headlights are going to be kind of dim. When you turn the, uh, the car on and the alternator is running, uh, they get brighter. But with an LED light bar, it doesn't matter if it's on or off, it'll be the same amount of brightness. So these are some uh, Sylvania Silver Stars right here. These are just the low beams. And uh, let's see how the uh, light bar compares. <laughs> Not much of a competition, huh? Big difference. It's 
Got a nice beam to it too. It's kind of cool. You know, for a little light bar too, this thing's only 21 inches. That's pretty nice. I can't complain with that. That's pretty badass. That's only 120 watts right there. Look at that. <laughs> it's pretty bright. Test 2 is going to be a little unfair <laughs> just because of what this thing's up against. Uh, I'm going to test this 120 watt, uh, 21 inch, 40 LEDs light bar against the one I have on my Jeep right now. Um, this one's rated at 9,000 lumens. This one's rated at 24,500 possibly. So, you know, this <laughs> the roof light bar is about double. So this is very unfair, but let's just see how they uh, they do. So there's that one. And the roof. Still, that's not too bad. That thing's still putting up a decent fight. Holy shit. Ah, you literally can't look right now. It, it actually hurts. <laughs> that's amazing. But when you fall into the beam, you can kind of see the brightness of them. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> Those are so much worse than high beams. Holy crap. But that's that's rather impressive. That's not too bad. <laughs> Especially for the uh, the rating it's at. I think this thing will do awesome on the Honda. Huh. Alright, so you've seen what that little light bar can do. Now let's get around to the fun part, actually mounting this thing. So, I figured this is going to be easiest if we take the entire front bumper off this guy. It's actually not that difficult. Just has a bunch of these little clips that you just pop out, and uh, I'll show you how to do that with like a pick tool. And then underneath, there's some Phillips head screws and some uh, regular bolts. So, start popping these out. Hey, <laughs> small mama. No, she parks on the other side. Yeah, she she got plenty. There we go. Alright, so we got the whole front bumper cover off, so now we can get to the, uh, the important parts. So, if we come down here, there is a metal bar that sticks out a little bit that I might be able to use to mount off of it. I have to get the light bar to fit into this bottom slot here, so I have to mount it here in some fancy way. For now, I'm going to see if I can mount it somewhere in there and see if I still got the adjustments that I need. Um, something that I noticed though, right now about the only negative that I'm seeing about this light bar is the way that the bracket is designed, uh, the wire gets in the way. So when you go to push this back, it starts cutting up the wire. That kind of sucks, but besides that, I haven't seen anything else bad, so bad wire placement, everything else is awesome. Put your light bar up there and make sure it's centered in the middle. I was basing that off of the, uh, the middle line right here, it splits it perfectly on the middle and I'm lining it up with this cross member thing. So put it up here and mark where you're going to drill on both sides, drill her out. Okay, so once you got your holes drilled, you'll have to get some bolts. Uh, if the ones provided do not work, you'll have to pick some up at a hardware store or find some laying around. Uh, for what I'm going through, since I can't get a bolt in here, I'm going to have to buy some longer ones. So, what you're going to do is measure your gap that you're going to go through, and then add like anywhere from a half to three quarters of an inch, because ideally you want a washer on each side. You're going to go through the bracket, and you're also going to have a nut. you got to make sure that you have the room to get it all in there. So I picked up a two and like, uh, this is between like a half inch and a three quarter bolt because it's metric. Just because that's what came with the kit, so I figured I'll just get some metric bolts. So you're going to slide them through your holes um, with washers and everything and let's mount this up and see what it looks like. Take a look. So, you'll see the bolt and washer go down the bottom. Uh, you want to find the biggest washer that you can. What this is doing is spreading out the load that the bolt is um, applying to all the metal. So the bigger the bolt, the more the um, metal can kind of have a, a break. 
just spreads it out. And then the washer up top is just so that that doesn't put too much pressure on the uh, the bracket. It has plenty of you know clamping force, all that good stuff. Same on this side. Now this is kind of soft metal, so if you really start cranking on these, it'll actually start to squeeze the metal together. So you know, just tighten it until it's you know definitely on there. Uh, I got nylon locking nuts, so that way they don't back off easily. But if you can't find them, you can also do like Loctite or something like that. You just want to make sure that if it is a little loose, that it's not going to vibrate free. So now you can see how these brackets operate. So you'll notice that they can pivot up and down to where we need it and then we can lock it down with the allen keys so just taking a, uh, a look at the test fit and it's absolutely perfect you couldn't get any better if you tried look at that it just oh my god <laughs> that's awesome it, ju it just fits in there like it was meant to be that is so cool oh man this is awesome I'm loving the hell out of this thing right now I really am I'm excited all right cool Let's start wiring. All right, so LED wiring. Um, for light bars, it's actually not that difficult. The most simple circuit that you could have is to take your light bar and wire it directly to the battery. So you have your red and black, just go straight to red and black. But there's a problem. You want to turn it on and off. So you had a switch. Well, the problem is the switch might not be rated for the kind of amperage that your light bar is running. For instance, if you had one like this, that's 250 watts. Uh, if you divide that into amps, it's uh, something kind of high, something you don't want running through an interior switch. So, how do you fix that problem? Easy. The answer is in relays. A relay is a switch that works off of a switch. So you can have an itty bitty little tiny switch tell a bigger switch to do the work for you. So this will sit under the hood, away from you. It's rated at 40 amps. So this is a 40 amp switch. And then this guy doesn't have to take any of the juice. This one takes just enough juice for the light to light and tell it, hey, turn on. And then this guy will turn everything on for you. So that's why relays are important. They uh, let you not burn up interior switches. So it's really simple. Right now we have a positive and a negative that'll go to the battery and the positive is fused and I'll tell you how to pick fuses in a second and that runs into the relay so this is the main power feed for the relay um, and then the relay will take that power and dump it through these wires over here to your light bar and the relay turns on and off through this switch which also gets power and ground from the battery terminals so if that doesn't make any sense I'll show you a wiring diagram in case that's your fancy let's take a look ski here this right here is a simple diagram for the light bar. So your light bar over here at the top right is going to be grounded. I'm probably going to run it either to the battery or somewhere. And it's going to get its positive feed from terminal 87 on the, uh, the relay. That is the output signal. The 30 is the positive feed. So that's going to go to the battery right there. Now your switched um, source is 85 and 86. It doesn't matter what direction you go in, but one side has to get positive, go through, and get grounded. You should also have some kind of load on here. The switch usually isn't enough to be a load, but if you have like a little light or something, you can also add a resistor um, to the switch, so that way there's just a little bit of load so the relay doesn't burn up or anything like that. But it's really simple. Basically the path goes through here, and it's just interrupted by 85 and 86. So once that's gapped, this is gapped, and it turns it on. So it's really simple. So all you got to do is run your wires to where you need to. Okay, now onto the safety aspect about picking your fuse. So this is really simple. This is the way that I do it. Um, take a look at what your light bar or whatever device you're installing is rated at. So this is rated at 120 watts. Now watts is just volts and amps multiplied together to get this number. So to get a different number, you can divide it by the other. It's like a little triangle. So if we take 120 watts, and divide it by the lowest battery voltage you ever expect to see, which you can say 12.6, but 12 is just simpler and safer and easier for this measurement. 120 watts divided by 12 volts gets you 10 amps. So this light bar will draw at the most 10 amps at 12 volts. So if we come down here and multiply 10 by one and a half for a safety factor, you get a 15 amp fuse. And you can do that for just about whatever the hell you want. It's really simple. So, that's how you find out what kind of fuse you want. 
Now we figured all that out, let's get to the uh, mounting of all this crap. Okay, so here's how I'm running everything. I got the, uh, the relay bolted down to this airbox bolt here because it's near the battery and faces where I need to. So that's cool, and if you need to, you can pop the relay off of this little bracket. And we have all our wires run. We got the battery terminals. They've got plenty of room to reach where we need to. Our switch goes off that way into the cab. I'll show you that in a second. And our light bar lights go under here and run along a wire harness I found that goes in the same direction. So I just ran that the same way that that one goes all the way out to the front. Don't snip your wires until everything's run and you're sure everything's going to fit. So I ran them out here, cut them, stripped them, and I'm going to solder them together and put heat shrink tubing on them. That's the best way to uh, attach wires together, but crimp connectors just, they rust out after a while, they can rattle loose, they're not that great. This is honestly the best way you can go. Electrical tape instead of heat shrink is a good second though. So, that front's just got to get soldered up. If you come up to this spot over here, where our wire harness goes, um, I popped out one of the uh, the plugs, this guy right here. Just get like a pick or something, a flathead behind them and just pop them out real easy. Uh, the way I decided which one I wanted was by going inside the car. So if you come down here, you got to look around and figure out where an available plug is. And if you notice, there's a big pad across this entire thing, like a, a cover. But I noticed that there was a little hole there, so I could actually get to that plug easy. So I just popped that one out because it's the easiest to get to. So I'm running my wire. I might run it um, on the other side of this fuse panel box instead. But then the last step is to figure out which one you want to use up here for the interior. Like I said, I want to put it here because it'll be uh, it'll be harder to hit accidentally up here. Uh, to get this plug out, um, this is what the piece looks like. And if you notice, there's an indent at the bottom where you can put a screwdriver. I think that's the way it's supposed to come out because it's sitting in there like that. And you get a flathead at the bottom because there's an indent. So you go digging in there carefully if you don't want to mar the surfaces or anything. And you can pop it out. There's a clip on this side and just a, a holder on that side. So just pry on there and then see if you can wiggle it out. It'll come out eventually. Now to fish this up to the top, uh, I took advantage of this clip connector right here. I unclipped it and I fed this end from the top down to the bottom, clipped it, and then pulled it up. So that way it's up here. So that's an easy way to do that. Now the way that I'm going to um, finally install this switch is that I'm going to drill a hole or whatever size I get switch into here. So I'm going to reuse this plug, put the plug back in with a switch on it. I picked up a switch from uh, an auto parts store. Just a simple toggle switch and it's uh, got a light. So we'll hook that up later. But I, um, I traced that on some cardboard to figure out how big it needs to be. And then I traced that template onto here. So now we're going to cut it up with a Dremel. So I just got a simple little cutting wheel right here. It does really well on plastic. Just take your time. Try and go a little smaller than what you think it's going to be. That way you can open it up later if you have to. So let's see if I can do this nicely. Took a little bit of work, but it's not too bad. Pretty clean. Alright, let's pop it in. Okay, so here's everything hooked up. I got the, uh, the wire run through there. And I just got some spade terminals on the switch. Everything's hooked up properly. Uh, for me, my black terminal goes to ground. The uh, power goes to white. And the blue one, um, which goes to terminal 86, I think. That's the accessory one. So with all three of those hooked up, the circuit can be completed. And the light illuminates along with the light bar. Neat. So, fucking pop that in there and we're golden. Let's finish up the... Uh wiring part of the installation by soldering everything together. Look at that. Nice and pretty. That's what I call a good jab. Alright, let's finish this up. Alright, final step is on the battery side over here. So, we got our negative terminal hooked up, we got our positive terminal hooked up, and, last but not least, we have our 15 amp fuse. So, 
Everything is soldered, wired, and run. All right, so final installation, make sure that you zip tie the wire out of the way. For my particular case, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna touch the radiator at all. So I have one zip tie here, and I also have one zip tie here with uh, some pressure on it so that it doesn't come in contact with the radiator. And we got one down here just to keep it from falling off. So there we go. Check it out. Now um, I flipped the light bar around so that the wire's on this side so I can adjust it how I need to and uh, the wire's not going to get crushed on the bracket anymore. So that's not a big deal. So I think it's time to put the bumper comfort back on. So do you see it? Because I don't. There it is. Neat. So. I'll give you guys a drive too, but. Oh man, that thing is so bright. Jesus. Tell me that ain't the fucking coolest shit ever. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Real nice. Alright, so everything's hooked up. So here's our wonderful low beams right here. They look gorgeous, don't they? There's our high beams. Here's the light bar. Now it's hard to tell. I'll turn the headlights off. That's just the light bar right there. That's actually pretty decent. And the way that I got it aimed, um, it's high enough that the hot spot on the road isn't super visible. And you can see pretty much everywhere. It's not too bad. I like it a lot more like this now. You can actually fucking see. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty baller. I'll take uh, some pictures side by side so you can see what this thing really looks like because this video mode doesn't do, uh, do it justice. It's got a little interior light too. Ooh. So here's my friend's uh, 2.5 liter Comanche on the right. He uh, mounted a similar size E or Life brand LED light bar on the grill as well. So I figured I'd just show this clip for fun. Depends where you are on the beam. It depends where you're at in the beam, because right now that one looks brighter. You come down here, this one looks brighter, so... Huh. Yours is, uh, is yours just spot, or...? Uh, it's a combo. And you're going to take the plate off? I think so, just to see what it looks like, but... As many people online say, they're good work lights. So, there you have it. It's my installation of my, uh... 21 and a half inch, 120 watt, 9000 lumen LED light bar. So, big shout out to uh, Zoe from Rigid Horse for uh, contacting me and asking me if I wanted to check out their product. So, I tell you what, this light bar is awesome. Definitely tell you to go and get it. And it's cheap too. 70 whole dollars. That's including shipping. That is a steal. <laughs> Seriously is. So yeah, go check them out. I definitely recommend them. Hope you enjoyed. I know I will.